So, Biden. God, what do we do with this Biden guy? Right? It's not even you can get that mad at him because he seems like this pathetic old guy who's barely holding it together, who is just incompetent, and who in the name of trying to keep his big 10 Democratic coalition together and appeasing the left, has hired a bunch of some Obama leftovers who may be semi, little bit competent, but then a bunch of just incompetent far leftists who have no clue about how government works or, or, or how to get stuff done or are so obsessed by their social agenda that they are going to just destroy whatever agenda he has and destroy their own capacity, capability of winning again. So in every front, the Democrats and the Biden administration are, are losing. They got a few things passed, uh, you know, the big stimulus package that got passed right at the beginning. Hopefully you guys all got your stimulus checks. And I don't know, I can't remember what it was, so many trillions of dollars, but um, you know, the one that Trump said was too small and they only gave us $1,400 checks and Trump wanted to give us $2,000 checks. Okay, I mean, that was obvious, it was gonna pass, everybody supported it, Republicans supported it, Trump supported it, Biden supported it. I mean, Trump didn't support it once, it was Biden's, but in principle, Trump supported it. And then he got this infrastructure bill passed, horrible bill, terrible bill, that even Elon Musk said, shouldn't have passed. He got that passed because 13 Republicans helped him out and, uh, and, and they passed it. Republicans love spending money. It's popular with their constituency. Um, but other than that, smoke and mirrors and everything is falling apart around him. So let, let's just go over some of the, some of the stuff. When, when, when Biden came in to office, one of the things he promised was, look, he said, we're facing a crisis, uh, COVID. We've had a child in the White House for four years, so obviously he couldn't cope. I agreed with that. Um, I'm gonna be an adult, and I'm gonna do a much better job, and I will crush COVID, and COVID's gonna go away because I'm gonna go by the science. Well, I mean, he lied. He overpromised. Eh, for the first few months, they continued uh, the rollout of the vaccines, uh, you know, maybe a little bit more effectively than the Trump campaign, but it was already going. It wasn't much because of Biden. Um, but all of that is obviously stalled. Delta virus showed up out of nowhere, making the vaccines, at least in terms of cases, less efficacious. Uh, you know, the world is still going nuts over this stuff. We still get, we still get the new variants, this new variant now. I, all you have to know about variants of COVID is whatever Thessy has, that's the variant that's, that's popular, that's, that's common. Thessy, we're going to call her the COVID magnet. Hopefully she's not offended. Um, Oh, Thessie does not like Wonderful Life. Thessie has good taste in movies. I don't like It's a Wonderful Life either, but she does like Harry Potter. I like Harry Potter too. All right, Thessie and I like, have a, a common view of, of, of some movies. That's good. Oh, which reminds me, it, somebody, uh, uh, um, I, I saw on Facebook, why do I ever go on Facebook? I don't know. But I, I, I saw on Facebook, somebody was critical of Bridge on the River Kwai. Um, and... Um, I need to remember to comment on that. Maybe later today, maybe on a future show, we'll see. Um, so, COVID has been politicized from the beginning, uh, from the beginning under Trump, horribly politicized. And I know a lot of people who felt like, Biden at least won't politicize it. You know, they'll, they'll have scientists, there'll be disagreement, but they won't politicize it. It won't be based on politics. Ha, huh. huh. ha, good luck. The FDA is being told to, Approve this, do that, boosters, children, whatever. Not based necessarily on science, often just based on, no, it'll show I'm doing something. 
let's let's distract them from my complete and utter failure in Afghanistan. Let's let's roll our boosters. What the hell? That's that's the kind of that's the kind of stuff that we saw under Trump, and it's almost as bad. Let's do vaccine mandates through OSHA. There's an original thought through OSHA. Maybe like Trump did, um, uh, rent what was it? Rent uh, uh, moratorium through uh, the CDC. That was a that was a real stretch of the imagination. CDC has authority over rent. Trump pulled that off. Biden said, "Hey, I can use OSHA." By the way, a appellate court, the sixth sixth district, just reversed the decision to freeze the vaccine mandate. Uh, Texas and other states are suing now to the Supreme Court. So the case about vaccine mandates using OSHA and everything is going to the Supreme Court. We'll see when and if and how the Supreme Court rules on it. So no shutdown of, of the virus, more problems. And then the incompetence at the FDA, excuse me, at the FDA continues. I mean, Pfizer has this pill. I th I've talked about this before because it's so outrageous that I'm going to talk about it until something happens. Pfizer has this pill that's been shown to reduce deaths among people who, have co who get COVID, reduce death to close to zero in a, in a relatively small sample. So among millions of people, maybe it'll only reduce deaths by 95, 96, 97, 98%. Right now, you know, in their sample, it reduced death by 100%. 100%. That means nobody dies from COVID. And it's over. It really is over at that point. And it's safe. Appears safe. They run the tests. FDA has told them to stop giving up placebo. Placebo. Because it's unethical, because the drug is so good. How can you give people the non-drug, the placebo? And the FDA has still not approved the drug, not giving it emergency authorization. Tests. I've been complaining about tests for, what, 22 months since... February, when we talked about tests, certainly since March of 2020. Tests should be ubiquitous. They should be everywhere. You should have them stacked in your home. They should be cheap. They should be easy to use. They should be everywhere. But no, still hard to get tests. Still difficult, particularly in the United States. You can get them much easier in Europe. Why can Europe get them easier than the U.S.? What the hell? So Biden's failed. You have to give him a, what do we give him? Well, let's score him here. What do we give Biden on COVID? I give him a D, a D. He basically got it with the vaccines on a platter. All he had to do was focus on testing at that point. All he had to do was not have vaccine mandates. All he had to do was tell the FDA to get their act together. C minus, D plus maybe, somewhere in that range. All right. Now, granted, Biden got, you know, the post-COVID economy. An economy was going to grow super big. Why? Because we know government stimulates, the economy grows. Never worked in history. Coming out of a crisis, the economy grows, and the economy was going to grow, and we stimulated it, and it should be amazing, amazing. Best economy ever. Well, that was Trump. But second best economy ever. Right? Couldn't be better than Trump's. So strong second quarter, unemployment really low. But then it turns out, like always turns out, when people claim that the economy grows because of government policies and government stimulates, the economy slowed. Slowed. So it's still growing. 
but it's growing a lot slower than it was. And critically, amazingly, inflation is out of control. Suddenly, we've got high inflation. Inflation that we haven't seen in America since the early 1980s. It's transitory, Biden said. It doesn't exist. It's like Trump in February of 2020 saying, the virus, it'll go away. Uh, with cases, they'll go away. It's going to just disappear, like a miracle. It's just going to disappear, he said in a live interview. I can't remember when, June or July of last year. What do we suddenly see? Well, inflation might not just go away. There might not be a miracle. It might not be transitory. Maybe all that money, all that helicopter money that was sent into people's bank accounts, maybe that money will actually cause prices to rise. Maybe the fact that we constrain supply chains by deciding that a lot of people's jobs were not essential and they didn't have to produce. So, poof, poof. The economy is not doing as well as Biden thought. Indeed, I would argue, I'll do a show on this at some point, that we're heading towards stagflation. We, we got heightened inflation. I, I don't see how the economy is going to grow very fast. The left was so excited about modern monetary theory, MMT, we could print all the money we wanted. And there was excess capacity, so there was never going to be inflation. And there's always excess capacity, so we can always print more money. It didn't quite work that way. Another failure of the left. Interest rates are heading back up. Maybe. We'll see. If there's inflation, they certainly are. The Fed now, you saw the stock market take a dive at the end of last week because the Fed now is going to fight inflation. But the market's afraid that in fighting inflation, what's the Fed going to do? Drive us into recession. So they're pricing a recession. It's not going to bode well for Biden. Not for Democrats in 2022, not for Biden in 2024. Build back better. Going nowhere. They've already said it won't get passed this year. Probably won't get passed next year. Maybe they'll pass a small bill. Yeah, of course we had to get Biden in. I'm, I'm not sorry Biden is in. Let, let's be clear. I'm not sorry. The only thing that would make me potentially sorry is we would get Trump back in 2024. Then Biden was a waste. We need to get anybody in to get rid of Trump. Trump is the greater threat, in my view. No question. This is all incompetence. This is not a threat to the very nature of America. And as you can see, it's failing. And popularity, Biden's popularity has collapsed. There's only one president less popular than Trump, than Biden. Trump. But he, he didn't lose the election, even though he was very unpopular. Because no way he could have lost it. He has overpromised, underdelivered. His supporters plummeted. You remember Afghanistan, the disaster that what Afghanistan was? Right? Disaster. His uh, woke appointees obsessed with, I don't know, sex discrimination, race discrimination, uh, being woke, having, using the right language, doing all this crap. American people hate it. Nobody likes it. Nobody likes them. You saw that in the election in November. Americans don't want woke. They don't like woke. Woke is in retreat. Right. You notice the last month, they've been a lot more silent about the woke. There's a lot less cancer culture bubbling to the surface. But this is good. It's good that the Democrats are here so we can see how incompetent and pathetic they are. Now the question is, will the Republicans grow up? Will they grow up here? Will they have the balls and the guts to not nominate Trump, to nominate somebody worthwhile, and to beat the crap out of these guys. Don't know. We'll see. We'll see. My mission in life 
is going to be over the next two years to at least try to uh, convince you guys that the Republicans should not nominate Trump. That's one of my missions. Sorry, you can hear a lot about how pathetic and incompetent and ridiculous Trump was and is. I, uh, you know, I will not vote for Trump in 2024 if he's the nominee. So let's try to make him not the nominee. I'll take this incompetence over Trump any day. This incompetence doesn't get anything done. Not getting anything done is better than Trump. Uh, let's see where, oh, <laughs> so what are they going to do? It looks like, uh, the Democrats are going to lose in a landslide in, uh, 2022. If and nothing happens between now and then, which is per, which means we'll get divided government, which is exactly what I love. My ideal, as I've told you many, many times is a demo is a democratic president with a Republican house and Senate. I miss Clinton's last six years. Looking back now, Obama's last six years weren't that bad as compared to Trump and compared to Biden. So divided government, guys, if you believe in liberty, it's the best we can hope for until something fundamentally changes in one of these parties. Biden will turn, what, 82 in uh, uh, 2024? He can barely stay awake or, you know, coherent now in three years. And then that's four more years. So he'll, he'll, he'll leave the presidency if he, if he, if he gets reelected at 86. Nobody's going to vote for this guy. He cannot win. I mean, anybody could beat him. This is why this is a real amazing opportunity for Republicans to nominate somebody who's not Trump. Because almost anybody could beat Biden in 2024. Anybody. <sighs> They're just incompetent. They're incompetent in Congress. They're two things, two things are the problem. The one hand incompetent, that's the kind of the centrist agenda, supposedly. They can't get it done because they're too incompetent. And on the other hand, they're too uh, beholden to the far left. And the American people despise the far left. So they can't win on the far left. God, where did Ron Paul's name come out of nowhere? Ron Paul's older, I think, than Biden. Um, let's not get into the Ron Paul debate. All right. Anyway, so we are, it's pathetic. It's pathetic. We'll do an analysis of the state of the Republican Party and the state of Trump within the Republican Party. Uh, but it's, and remember the, 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 the every single agenda of theirs is collapsing. Uh, woke agenda uh, more than anything probably right now. Because it's a loser when it comes to the American people, as I told you from the beginning. American people do not buy into uh, the nihilistic agenda of the, of the far left. And they won't support the, the, the sanction of that far left by their president. And that's part of why Biden's popularity has collapsed. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbrookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see The Iran Brooks Show grow, please consider sharing our content, and of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.